See a little bit more of that there. So if you think that only Missouri Republicans are opposed to the health care law, think again. Fox News has been crunching the numbers from the Secretary of State. Here's what we found, okay? Nearly 668,000 people voted yes on Proposition C, which is a rejection of mandated coverage. If every single registered Republican, according to this count, in the state voted yes, which is highly unlikely, but let's assume that they all did, that would leave more than 90,000 non-Republicans who voted yes. 90,000 non-GOP votes. There's about 3,500 3, members of the Liberal Party, nearly 2,000 members of the Constitution Party. That leaves more than 84,000 Democrats who apparently voted against a key part of the president's health care plan. Bringing in now radio talk show host Mark Levin. He is a constitutional attorney. Mark, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Martha. So, you know, a lot of folks are saying that uh, way too much is being made of this Missouri vote uh, and that it doesn't matter. Tell us why you think that. <laughs> well, let's let's understand what's going on in Missouri. There are about right. six million people in Missouri, about five million are of voting age, and less than 20 percent even voted at all in this election, and less than 15 percent voted for Proposition C. Let's read Proposition C. People voted to deny the government authority to penalize citizens for refusing to purchase private health insurance or infringe upon the right to offer or accept direct payment for lawful health care services and modify laws regarding the liquidation of certain domestic insurance companies. Companies. Does that make sense to you? So what do you, you, so what do you say? You're saying people didn't read the proposition, they don't know what it says, it's all grouped in together so it doesn't matter? That's the argument? I'm saying it's awfully confusing. It okay. combines things that are completely different all in one. It is not at all the, the health care reform package. It doesn't mention the coverage for people's pre-existing conditions or the fact that children are yeah, covered or the fact they Mark, can't I mean, take you off for you being just, sick. You just read it to us. So, so you just mentioned that, that it talks about being mandated uh, to purchase health care coverage. I mean, that, this is the nut of this whole discussion, as we both know. Now, here's the thing. That is an essential element to health care reform. If everybody doesn't buy in and it says you absolutely must own health care insurance or you will be fined, if everybody doesn't sign on to that part of this health care reform bill, it, it, I mean, it, it's an absolutely essential element of the program. Well, first of all, Martha, this is under Missouri law. Missouri law does not trump the federal law, so it's kind of like a straw poll. Uh, it, it doesn't do anything. It's, it, and, of course, as I pointed out, the, the private mandate is just one of three pieces of this. The other thing it does is it talks about the pain without the gain. Let's say you were to give a poll to Americans on Medicare. Now, 94% of beneficiaries of Medicare like their Medicare. But let's say to Americans, you have a poll, you can get rid of your Medicare taxes but still get all the Medicare benefits. You think Americans would vote for it? Of course. I suspect they but, would. All right, so, so you know what? But here's the thing. I, I mean, I, I get what you're saying about this being specific to Missouri. It's a small turnout. It was, you know, it's not even the, the midterm uh, election. It's a small election. But, but here's why it's getting so much attention. 71% in Missouri, which is a swing state, uh, you know, let, let's say that, you know, a handful of those people didn't know what it said or got confused by the other three things. It, it raises the question when you've got six other states who are pursuing similar initiatives. You have 21 states altogether who are challenging the legality and the constitutionality of a mandate of making somebody buy something, of having the government say, you have to have health care insurance, John Doe and Mary Smith and everybody else. You have to have it. People, there is a movement that appears to be growing, not just in Missouri, in 21 states across the country uh, to challenge that idea. Do you deny that? Oh, no, of, co of course. You're, I mean, you're absolutely right. There's the political matter, which really doesn't do anything because the supremacy clause in the Constitution trumps whatever Missouri wants to do. But then there's the question, the constitutional question that people are raising. And, you know, I, I happen to have my Constitution right here, and I can read Article 1, Section 8. I won't go through all the details, but basically there's the tax and spend clause, there's the commerce clause, there's the necessary and That's proper right. clause, there's general welfare clause. Look, at the end of the day, if this is unconstitutional, then Medicare is unconstitutional, and America Americans like Medicare, so if they win this constitutional battle, everybody loses Medicare. I don't think they're going to win what this if, constitutional battle. What about battle. the bottom line fact that, that a lot of people, it just doesn't sit well with them to be mandated to buy health care insurance, and they're going to have that in their head, you know, in their bag of, of what they're thinking about when they head to the polls. So, you know, what? It, it does, in many ways, the constitutionality of it, uh, of course, it, it matters. It will be challenged. And you, you rightly point out the supremacy clause. The Commerce Clause is one argument that would say that it may be not, le not constitutional uh, to enforce this kind of purchase on people. But the bottom line, it, it, where it's going to count, is in the elections. 
You know, Martha, the government taxes people for not doing things all the time. Every single year, when income taxes come around, I get fined for not having children. I do. If you have children, you get uh, you know three thousand off your income. That maybe a thousand off your taxes. I don't have any kids. I get fined. So the government is fining me for my inactivity. And frankly, whether or not I have kids has very little to do with commerce. This happens all the time. There's nothing unusual here. And as far as I'm concerned, I this think a lot of very folks would argue it's very different. I mean, everybody knows you have to pay income taxes, and whether or not you can consider it a fine to not have children, if you get a break if you do have children. I mean, I, you know, that matters. But it's the sure same difference, right? Apples and apples. But no, Mark, but it's the same difference. You could tax everybody and then give people a break if they buy health care insurance. It's the same difference. All and right, this we affects gotta go. very few people. And if you did, there'd be maybe three other little Mark Levins running around that we could argue with, so that would be good too. Mark, thank you. Good to see you <laughs> thank as you, always. Martha. All right, well, the count.